want to welcome you to our first Sunday morning worship service of 2024. We're starting the year off right, worshiping the Lord and coming into His presence. And I'm believing that it's going to be a year of blessing, that it's going to be a year of kingdom increase. And as we are praying and as we're fasting, you need, you know, when you fast, you got to have purpose behind your fast. You've got to have your, your, your focus set on what the Lord is doing. And I began sharing with you last week uh, a word that the Lord spoke to me. And it was just a phrase that was in a text from my spiritual authority, our state overseer, had sent out just a word of encouragement to pastors. And as I read that text message, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me. And I shared with our overseer yesterday, he called to check on me. And I said, you know, God spoke to me through this. And I believe it's a word over our church. And we're believing it for 2024. We are believing for more in 2024. More in 2024. That's a simple statement, but I believe it's a word from the Lord that we can stand on and say, Lord, I'm, I'm believing you. You're, we're, not, we're not decreasing, we're increasing. Lord, I'm thanking you that there's more that you have for us in this new year. And I look back at 2023 and I think, praise God, it's not 2023 anymore. But the Lord brought us through, right? We continue to move forward, and I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for what He has in store for us. And I shared this uh, verse, a couple verses of Scripture with you last week in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able through His mighty power at work within, and everybody say, us. Take your finger and point at yourself. Us. His power at work in us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. See, if it's just me and I'm thinking about it, I can think certain things. Or I might go to God and just ask Him for certain things. But when it's His power that's at work within us, He's able to do infinitely greater. And then He said, glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so what we're doing is we're stretching out our faith over this new year. I am thanking God. I, I made a declaration in my life last week. I'm leaving some stuff back in 2023, and, I, and we're walking forward into 2024, and I'm not bringing that stuff with me. Now, let me tell you, child of God, the Holy Spirit is already at work in you. Did you see that in that scripture? That power of God is already at work in us. You may say, but I don't feel powerful. But I don't feel I, you know, like the Holy Spirit is working in me. Well, I don't feel like God's doing something in me. Don't operate by your feelings. If you operate by your feelings, you'll be up one day and down the next. You'll be up one hour and down the next. You'll be up one second and down the next. It's, you look like a heart monitor. You go, do, 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 do. Don't operate by your feelings. Feelings are deceptive. We operate by the word of the Lord. So last week as I concluded, I just gave you this point. Walking into 2024 with faith for more. Walking into 2024 with faith for more. And I felt like I, I hadn't planned on it, but when I began to share this, I just felt like we needed to walk a little bit and and uh, I uh, left my cane up here and just started walking. And I was just declaring, I'm just going to walk. And we just marched around this place and did a Jericho march around here saying, we're leaving the stuff in the past this morning. I thank God my, I, my cane's somewhere at my house sitting over in a corner somewhere. I left that behind. I'm not, I'm not carrying that with me. I'm thanking God for renewed strength and renewed anointing and healing over this new year. I'm believing that. You know, our church is filled with walking miracles. 
had it not been for the hand of the Lord in 2023, there would be several of us who would not be here now. We'd be in heaven. I'm convinced that had it not been for the miraculous hand of the Lord and your prayers, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have come through what I went through this last year. And it was, it was serious. And I shared with my wife, I said, if it wasn't for you and Jesus keeping me alive. <laughs> there are several in our church that would not be here. But we're walking into 2024. We're moving forward. I can look back in 2015, and in 2015, I started to get weaker and weaker, started to have trouble, and I didn't know what was going on, and they were doing all kind of tests, and they diagnosed me with a neurological disease, and that thing progressed, and they did all kind of treatments, and the, some of the treatments helped temporarily, but then the symptoms just kept progressing and getting worse, but the church was praying. And, and y'all got around me and just standing right over here at an altar call on a Saturday night. Here we are and we're praying. And November 14th, 2015, the Lord just reached down his hand and he healed me that night. And I thank God that the Lord is still in the healing business. Now it was... Three years later, it was October 21st, 2018, and I was sitting right here, and our state overseer was sitting next to me. He came to preach pastor appreciation that Sunday. And as I'm sitting there during worship, we're worshiping the Lord, and I was just thanking the Lord for things. And I thought of what I had went through three years earlier and how... Uh, sick that I had been. I had to be on oxygen and all that kind of thing. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, thank you that you healed me. And I was thinking back to the day that it happened and it was right here and I was standing right in front of it. I said, Lord, you healed me. Thank you. You healed me right there. And the Lord spoke these words to me standing there that morning. He said, I healed you and I am healing you. It wasn't just an event. It's your life. It is a lifestyle to walk out the healing of the Lord. To just continue to say, I am the healed of the Lord. Sometimes the Lord does something in us, and the devil wants to throw it back on us again. And the devil says, no, but this is what, you're always going to have this, and this is how it's going to be. But I thank the Lord, I continue to walk in the healing of the Lord. After the Lord healed me, they went and they redid the test and all that, and they confirmed. But I still struggled for a while with trying to get my strength back. I was still weak, and I was still going through some things. And the devil kept telling me, you know, you're going to look like a fool. Because that's going to come back on you, and you're, you're not really healed, and you've said you're healed. Now, nobody else in here has ever had the devil lie to you before. And I had to determine, I'm just going to stand on the Word of God. Here's what I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I do not know the future. I know right now I, I just walk in healing and then for the future I just I stand on his word and what he said and he's got it all in control. Why did the Lord heal me and why is the Lord continuing to bring healing to my body? It's like every breath that I have and over uh, the last uh, over eight years now, when I couldn't get breath in my lungs, he's just putting every single breath. He's just he's putting that in there. And I thank the Lord for that. I praise God for that. Why is he doing that? Well, the reason that he's doing that, I'm sure, are many. But it wasn't just an accident that the Lord did it. It wasn't just, you know 
just a, well, the Lord just said, yeah, I guess I'll, I guess I'll do that. The Lord doesn't do anything without purpose. And over this last several months, after having uh, two surgeries and struggling the way I did and all of the other things that have happened, the, the enemy spoke to me multiple times and, and said, you need to just throw in the towel. You're, this is going to be your life. And this is just going to be, you're not going to be able to get through this. You need to, and, and, you know, you start getting thoughts in your mind. Well, maybe what if I have to go on disability and I'm not able to preach and I'm not able to pastor? And the enemy started telling me the church is going, I'm, the church is going to be torn apart and you're going to suffer and, you know, all of this. And I had to continually just battle that because, you know, the devil's just saying, well, he's, God's done with you. You're not who you used to be. I'm talking to some people in the room this morning. God's done with you. You're, you're not going to ever be who you used to be. You're not going to have the strength you used to have. You're not going to walk in the anointing that you once walked in. And now all of this, you just need to accept that this is reality and you just need to go on with this reality. Don't you believe it? He's a liar. He is a liar. So why did the Lord preserve so many of us? Many that know it, and some, some of you, you don't know it, but the Lord preserved your life, or you wouldn't have made it to 2024. Why did he do it? Because God has a plan for you. He's not done with you yet. It's not that he's saying, just throw in the towel, just forget it. No, 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 that's the word of the enemy. God's not done with you. God, God's put you here with purpose. You're alive because God has a plan. Not only does God have, have a plan, but you need to understand and you need to pray it and you need to say it and you need to stand in faith this way. God has a plan for me in 2024. God has purpose for you in 2024. It's specific. God's saying, I have purpose for you. That's why you're breathing. That's why you're alive. That's why God has sustained you, because he has purpose for you. Now, the verse that we read in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21, says his power is already at work in you. Sometimes the problem is we have to stir up that gift that we've let sit idle. Sometimes we just, haven't, we just haven't been pressing in and seeking God like we should have, and we haven't been in the place, and maybe we kind of believed the lie and thought, well, God's done with me. But you have to stand on God's Word and say, no, God has purpose written over my life for such a time as this. Don't think you're just along for the ride. Don't think, well, it just happened that I'm here. You know, God's doing, God's moving in the church, but I just happen to be kind of hanging on. No, God has purpose for you in 2024. God's purpose is not just for you to bring oxygen into your lungs and push some carbon dioxide out and just get by. God's purpose for you is to be used of him in this year. God has plans for more to do through you in 2024. You've heard me quote it many times, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. God said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now there's a couple things here that you ever have the Holy Spirit just kind of highlight something? I've read this scripture I don't know how many thousand times over and over and over and over and over. But just in preparing for today, notice just a couple things. Most Christians would say, yeah, I know God has plans. But this isn't just plans. It's personal. Those plans are for you. He's not against you. He's for you. And you are an, an, an intricate part in God's plan of what he's designed to do in 2024. 
the devil wants to convince you that you're just, well, I'm just present. I'm just here. No. No, you're not. God has plans for you in 2024. And, you know, as many times as I've read this, there's kind of a phrase that I have missed the impact of. And yesterday, the Holy Spirit just kind of jumped it off the page to me. Now, all through Scripture, this, how many people believe this is God's word to us? Right? So when you read this book, it's God speaking to you. It's God making promises to you. It's God giving you direction and guidance for how you should live your life. It's, this is God speaking over you. It's God declaring something over your life. Right? All scripture is. But he thought that it was so important in this verse that he paused in the middle. I mean, all scripture is given by God. It's a declaration of God. But this verse, he must have just thought, I've got to make sure I emphasize this and underline it. I want to make sure you don't miss this. He said, I have plans for you, declares the Lord. God's saying, I made a declaration over you before you were in your mother's womb. I spoke something over your life. And God, when he says something, it's going to come to pass. He's a God of his word. His word does not return void. It accomplishes everything that he intended for it to accomplish. He made a declaration over your life. I have plans for you. And then just to make sure that you didn't miss the fact, he said, declares the Lord. Now, hear me. If God declared it, we don't have any right to come in disagreement with it. I should not entertain a thought that is contrary to it. As a matter of fact, Scripture tells us we need to take into captivity Every thought and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. So when people you know, might start to think in the body of Christ, well, I'm less than. No, that's not, God's not going to do that for me. No, this is my reality. Then you got to go back and say, God already declared it. I cannot come against God's word. I've got to come into alignment with what God spoke. God declared it over you. Don't, don't forfeit the promise of God that he spoke over your life. It's, it's like God just was speaking to Jeremiah, and then he said, listen, underline that, put it in bold, and put three exclamation points at the end. Declares the Lord. Are you catching that? God declared it over you, regardless of what happened in 2023. Regardless of what problems that you've been through, regardless of what the doctor said, regardless of how you, you feel about it, regardless of the, the current situation that you find yourself in, regardless of what you've lost, regardless of what you lack, regardless of what you see in yourself, no, I don't think that's going to happen. God made a declaration over your life. You don't have the right to come against God's word. Now, my word is worth just about this much. God's word is infinitely powerful. God's word has might and authority. Are you hearing me today? We better stand on God's word because God's got purpose written over your life. Flip over in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 and note what Paul said. Paul said this, for we are God's masterpiece. He's created us anew in Christ Jesus. Why were you saved? Why did he save you? People say, well, he saved me because he loved me. And yes, he did. But God had purpose in your salvation, in what he did in Christ in you. When he 
transformed you by the renewing of your mind. When he came and and he took you from darkness into light, it said that he's created us anew in Christ Jesus. You, You were born again. Right? Not just because, yeah, so that I would just sit in a pew and be born again. Sometimes that's how we live our life. We live our life like the scripture says. We're God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so I could come to church on Sunday morning and warm a pew. That's not what he said. He he didn't say, I created you anew in Christ Jesus so you could just exist that way. He said, I created you so you can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. God sat down a trillion years ago and he wrote a story. He said, I've got this whole masterpiece. It's all of creation. It's all of time. And you know what? I've got some things that are going to need done in 2024. God sees the end from the beginning. He said, you know what? I've got some stuff that's got to get accomplished in 2024. I've got some stuff that's going to have to get done in a place called Conneaut, Ohio. So I'm going to create, and you just insert your name right there. Not only am I going to create, insert your name right there. I am going to then recreate, insert your name right there, and make him or her new in Christ Jesus. I'm doing that so that they will do the works that I already wrote down a trillion years ago. God already had it all planned out. God already has a plan for your life. You aren't just random. You you, you didn't just happen to be. You are not an accident. God has purpose written over you. And let me just tell you, these are the last days. Jesus is coming soon, and the church needs all hands on deck right now. We don't need people just kind of hanging off the edges over here. We need the church to be alive and anointed and functioning as God has called us to. There's work to be done. There's kingdom work to be done. And we need to put our our hands to the plow and say, God, you've got purpose for me. And I, I don't have the right to just fritter my time away on stuff that doesn't matter. There are too many people in the church that are wasting one of the most valuable commodities that God has given. He's given us only so many days. We we have to learn to number the days that we have so that we can incline our ear to Him and we can say, God gave me instruction. i got to follow what He said. I've got to follow His purpose and His plan for my life. Stop putting it off. This is the year that that we are living in right now. I don't know that we're going to get another one. I don't know that we're going to be here a year from now. If you know Jesus, I hope that you've got your ear tuned listening for the sound of a trumpet because he could come at any moment and catch his bride away and take us out of here. Man, I'm looking forward to that day, his glorious appearing. But there are some people that I know I'm assigned to, and I don't want them to miss that day. You are a key part of what God's doing in 2024. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. Don't believe what the enemy is trying to speak over you. As a church, God's called us to some things. I'm going to try to hurry here. Focus on His kingdom in 2024. Focus on His kingdom above everything else. 
You know, Jesus spent time investing into his disciples. He demonstrated the kingdom of God to them. When Jesus healed people, he did it with his disciples watching on. When he cast out demons, he did it with his disciples right there. When he taught the word of God, his disciples were the first ones to hear. He taught them uh, how to pray. He taught them uh, how, to, how to walk in obedience to the Father in all things. And you know what? Those disciples were unprepared. They didn't get it. They misunderstood. They made so many mistakes. They, they were not thinking spiritually, but they were thinking carnally. I mean, Peter's over here rebuking Jesus. Did you realize that? Peter rebuked Jesus. I mean, he's coming against God. Yeah, that didn't go well. Yeah, that doesn't go well when we come against the Lord. They didn't understand what was happening, and still Jesus called them together, anointed them, and sent them out. You think you're unprepared? You think, well, yeah, but I misunderstood. Yeah, but I don't understand all the Scripture. I mean, I couldn't witness to somebody. What if they asked me a question that I wouldn't know the answer to? Have you read what these guys did? I mean, they're over here going, hey, um, why don't we call down fire from heaven and kill some people? You know, they didn't really qu quite catch Jesus' uh, whole concept here. I came to seek and save the lost. In Luke chapter 9, verse 1, he called his 12 disciples together. This was a, a ragtag group, if there ever was one. And he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He said, listen, the devil's going to come at you, but I'm going to give you power so that you're not going to be under his authority. You're under my authority. And there's a, there's a lot of people who are sick out here, and I'm going to give you the ability when you pray that there's going to be healing to cure those diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. I don't think it's overstating it to say everything Jesus did in front of them was all about this. It was all about, I've been here to give you the model so that you can see. I brought you through all of this so that you would understand that I've got power over everything and now I am giving it to you so that you will preach the kingdom. Preach the kingdom. Preach the kingdom. And then let healing just flow. God's calling us in 2024 to preach the kingdom of God and to see healing flow. We need to focus on His kingdom, not our kingdom. Not a man-made kingdom, but the kingdom of God. we got to declare His kingdom. Now, there's a whole lot that that means, but I want to put it in very simple terms for you today. When you made Jesus the Lord of your life, when you asked Jesus, would you be my Savior and my Lord, then that brought you under his authority. He's the king, and so you came into his kingdom, right? Part of what Jesus told his disciples when they prayed is you pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. When you got saved, that was a, a, a partial answer to that prayer. Somebody was praying for you. Somebody was praying that you'd be saved. And you came into the kingdom, and the kingdom of God got larger. When you preach the kingdom, what are you doing? You're expanding the kingdom. Every person in 2024 who comes to know Jesus because of someone in this church 
That's expanding the kingdom of God. They will come and they will confess, Jesus is my Lord, he's my king, and his kingdom is going to continue to increase. I'm believing this. I'm believing that Jesus is coming soon. We don't have a lot of time. And we need to be all about his kingdom. We need to strip away the stuff that robs our time, robs our energy, that takes and and adds stress in stuff that is not about kingdom work. Are you hearing your pastor today? And we need to say, help me find somebody who needs Jesus. Help me find somebody. Because if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the other things will be added to us. He'll give us whatever it is that we need. We just got to seek his kingdom. We need to preach the kingdom. We need to seek the kingdom. We need to pray the kingdom. We need to say, God, let your kingdom in Conneaut, Ohio, let your kingdom. You know, there's, there's way too many unsaved people that we see and we don't even think about it. You might have somebody that lives next door to you that doesn't know Jesus. You might have somebody on your street that doesn't know Christ. And we already established God has purpose written over your life. You say, well, somebody else will have to tell them. I don't know. I might mess up if I told them. You know how many times these disciples messed up? But his power is already at work in you to anoint you for the task that he's called you to. That's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's witnessing to somebody. That's showing the love of Jesus Christ, showing his heart to them. You know, there are the studies say that uh, there's about 80 some percent of people, whether or not they're being honest when they're surveyed, we don't know. But they, people that don't go to church, 80 some percent of them say, if someone that was a friend or family member invited me, I would go. Well, then we better get about. You know, you don't have to uh, have a theology degree to preach the kingdom. You know what you have to do? You have to, you know, can I just share with you for 60 seconds what Jesus did in my life? Could I tell you who I used to be and how he rescued me and how he healed my soul, how he saved me and how he loved me and how much he loves you? If you just share that with somebody this week and just pray, God, I just pray that you're going to to transform them and make them part of your kingdom. We just got to step out of our comfort zone. The church is way too comfortable. Not enough people said amen, so I'll have to preach on that for a second. The church is way too comfortable. If you want to add something to your prayer list this month in January as we're praying and fasting, if you would dare, then you just add this to your prayer list. God, make me uncomfortable in your purpose for me this year. Let Jesus know, I'll be willingly uncomfortable. God, stretch me. God, do something in me that is exceedingly abundantly above everything that I would ask or imagine. God, I'm willing to be used of you. I don't have to have an audience. I don't have to have somebody uh, coming alongside and saying how great I am. God, just take, take me to the least of these. Help me find somebody that's hurting. Help me to walk into somebody's life who's struggling and be able to bring hope to them. God, use me. We need to reach out like never before. We need to show the love of Jesus Christ, not condemnation. There's just way too much of that. You don't need to go and, you know, if people are sinning, you don't have to go and tell them they're sinning. You need to come and tell them there's a Savior that loves them. When people, you see people that that aren't in church, they don't need you to call them and go, hey, where have you been? Why ain't you in church? You need to call them and say, Man, I have missed you so much. Is there something I can do for you? How can I pray for you? 
what could I do to help you? What's going on in your life that I could just be, support you and help you and, and lift you up and help you on the next step? That's what you need to do, church. I'm preaching it better than you're acting like. As we're praying, God will give opportunity. God will give divine appointment. He'll give divine appointment after divine appointment. I believe that God put you here in 2024 with purpose. It's very intentional. I believe the devil knows it, and he's afraid of you. He's afraid of what you could be if you finally realize the Holy Ghost, the dunamis power of God is in me to be able to preach the kingdom. As he said, you go and you're going to start in Jerusalem and then you're going to go to Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the, of the earth, he told his disciples. I believe if we just say, well, I'll just start talking to the person that's right there in front of me, somebody that lives next door to me, somebody that I see at work tomorrow, I'm just going to be bold and uncomfortable in, in just showing them the love of Jesus Christ and then another and then another and then God will take me places I didn't want to go and God will take me places I never thought I could go and God will give me opportunities that I never thought I'd have because he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even Imagine, as they're coming to the instruments, I'm not going to finish this one today. I'm going to pick up there next week. Is that all right? We need to be about our Father's business now more than ever. I want to pray over you and anoint you today for more in 2024. I want to pray over those who'll say, yeah, I'm willing. I'm willing to be stretched now, sometimes that stretching takes forms that we just never even thought or anticipated. I didn't think that God was going to stretch me in 2023 the way he did. I didn't anticipate that. I thought in August, I'm going to go in, I'm going to have this surgery in a few weeks, I'll be back, I'll be able to, you know, just keep on in ministry. I did not anticipate my wife trying to wake me up, and here I am, and I'm gone, and she's shaking me and screaming in my face, and I was gone. She's, she's lifting me up, and I just fall back down because I was literally gone. But the Lord brought me back. I didn't anticipate that happening. I didn't anticipate having to have the, the EMT team and the ambulance come into my house. How many times? Three different times. I didn't anticipate having to go to the emergency room multiple times. I didn't anticipate I was going to have to go back to the hospital and be admitted and be in there 10 days. And then after I got out thinking, okay, now I'm good. And then later having to be going back and be admitted again. And then this problem. And I didn't anticipate all that. But the Lord lined me up with divine appointment through that. One of those times... I came and I just, I got out of the hospital. I was here for pastor appreciation and I just came up and talked for a couple minutes and I shared, I said, you know, the Lord gave me divine appointment in the hospital and there was a young lady training to be a nurse. I don't know if y'all were here, if you remember me talking about that. And I got to pray with her and another nurse just sitting on the side of my bed uh, this week. I didn't realize she was sitting right here. She drove all the way here. She was in uh, at the hospital in, in Giaga, and I had talked to her about the church and told her, well, I'm gonna, I have to get out of here because i got to be in church on Sunday. And her and her boyfriend drove all the way out here, and she was sitting here in church that morning as I was given that testimony. I'm telling you, God will line you up through ways that you didn't anticipate. God will put people in your path through circumstances that you did not want or ask for. But we got to be willing to say, God, just go ahead and stretch me. God, go ahead. You just, you have your way. It's not my will, my way, my plan. It's your will, your way, your plan. I'm submitting everything to you. You be in charge. You get the steering wheel. I'll just come along for the ride, Jesus. You just take me where you want me to go, and I'll walk in obedience. Is that good? I'm going to ask my leaders, if you will, to come as they play something. Would you stand this morning? Hallelujah. Now, if you're willing, 
as the leadership team comes and stands right up here, if you're willing to be bold enough to say, God, I, I'll just be, I'll be willingly uncomfortable. God, it doesn't have to be my way. I will submit to you. Things may come that I don't understand, and I'm okay because I'm going to trust you in it. If you're willing to say, God, it's your will, not my will, and I'll submit. When someone comes to me and you place me in a situation that's over my head, you'll anoint me for it because the power of the Holy Ghost is already at work in my life. If you want to sign up for that this morning, then I want to invite you to come and just make a line right across in front here. I'm going to ask leaders to just get some anointing oil. And just Would you just walk through, leaders, get some anointing oil and pray or anoint each person before we pray. We're going to pray in a moment, but just walk through right now and just, just anoint each one. I want to make sure every person that comes before we pray is anointed. Just walk through and anoint them, and then we're going to pray after. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you for people who are saying, I'll be willingly uncomfortable. I know there's some that are watching at home, and you say the same thing right there where you're at. And I'm praying for you as well. I'm believing God for an anointing over you as well. That the Lord's got purpose and plan written over your life in 2024. God will accomplish it. God will accomplish it. We're not taking this for granted, and neither is He. The Holy Ghost is taking note of your step of faith, of just walking up here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, leaders, I'm going to begin to pray, and I just want you to walk through. Make sure every person here, I want you to put your hands on them. Here's what Paul said to Timothy. He said, stir up the gift of God that is in you by the laying on of my hands. Now, as they come through, they're going to lay hands on every person. And I'm going to encourage you, just you lay hands and then you move on to the next one. If you feel like the Holy Spirit gives you a word that you need to pray, then you go ahead and do that. But I want to make sure we pray over each person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray this morning. Father, I thank you that you've got purpose and plan over this year. God, we're not believing you for just incremental increase. We are believing you for exceedingly abundantly, infinitely more. And God, I thank you for that more, that more in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the more that you have for us in this year, that we will walk in obedience to you. God, that we're willing to be uncomfortable for you. Lord, that you would use us in new ways, in ways that we didn't even anticipate that your kingdom is going to be expanded through that that you use us for this year. Lord, I thank you for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for more, for more, for more, for more, for more in 2024. We're believing you, God, that those things, Lord, of the past, they are behind us, and we walk forward with a fresh anointing.